Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I did my Sarah Sanderson makeup tutorial. If you don't know who Sarah Sanderson is, go watch Hocus Pocus. I am going as her to Dallas Fan Days in October in Irving. I'm going to be Sarah, my mom's going to be Winnie, my dad's going to be a male version of Mary, and I'm so excited. I'm really impressed with this wig so far. When I first, this is my second time wear putting it on, so I want to see what it would look like when I wear it. I didn't have the makeup or anything on. None of I've got the makeup on. I like it a lot better. I didn't quite like it as first at first. I am excited. Also, it's September. It's spoopy season. I am excited. I love Halloween. Halloween is my second favorite holiday after Christmas. But I love Halloween. I love the spoops. But enough about spoops. Let's show you how to do Sarah's makeup. As soon as this wig gets out of my eyes. Alright, as always, starting off by putting on a wig cap. Remember, kids, take your glasses off for this if you wear glasses. If you have earrings in, take your earrings out for the love of God. Because if you don't, the cap will get stuck in your earrings and pull. And it will get stuck on your nose too. And it will hurt. And you will lose a backing or two. Depending on how, I don't know how many earrings you have in your ears, if any. You might not have any. If you don't, you obviously don't have to worry about that. Really? <laughs> really? I swear sometimes there's just nothing more attractive than someone in a wig cap. Okay, that's as good as that's gonna get because. I've come to terms with the fact that the pieces at the back of my head are just never going to go in the cap because they are too short to be restrained. Alright, let's get started. I'm going to use the Milani Gilded Noir Palette. I never knew the shades had any- oh wait, are the shades- oh yeah, duh, the shades- okay, the shades are on both the back and the front. I didn't know they were on the back too. And I'm going to take a nice, decent sized fluffy brush. And I'm going to dip into, well first of all I'm going to set my mirror up, and I'm going to dip into Entitled, this light kind of taupey brown shade. This is going to go all over the lid, just everywhere. Oh, whoops, nope, wipe that away really really fast, nope, wow. And to think makeup's gonna be my career and I forgot to prime my eyes. <laughs> wow. I have it together today. <laughs> oh my god. I'm going to start by priming my eyes with the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer in Fair. And I'm spreading it all the way up to my brow bone, all over my lid and over my inner corner. Just everywhere. So I know it's been a hot minute since I've posted anything on this channel, but uh, I've been a little busy looking for a beauty school to enroll in, so that's been taking up a lot of my time, and you know. And I've also been, you know, just working on other costuming stuff. I've got another costume that I'm working on for Fan Days, Dallas Fan Days in October. To set my eyes really quick, I'm going to use the NYX HD Finishing Powder and Translucent. Normally I would use a setting powder, but I didn't grab my normal setting powder. Because that's a skin tone uh, powder. My bottle is hissing and it's making me uncomfortable. And by that I mean it's distracting me. And I'm not using that face powder today because I'm making myself paler than I am. And adding that powder on top of a paler than normal foundation is just going to beat the entire purpose of using a paler than normal foundation. So I've been busy and I haven't uh, had time, really had time to record anything for this channel. But I'm back. Yeah, I'm working on a second cosplay. I wasn't originally going to do this costume. I was going to actually do, um... Captain Marvel for Friday. This is my Friday costume I'm talking about now. 
uh, I'm actually, I was going to do Captain Marvel. You know in the movie where she's like, they call it, I've seen people call it like the grunge Captain Marvel look. I'll try and find a picture, if I can find it I'll pop it on screen. That's a very easy costume to do for Friday since the con start doesn't start till 4. Now I'm gonna go into Entitled in the Milani palette and now I'm gonna put this shade all over my eyes. But yeah, that would be a very easy costume for me to do, and that was going to be my original plan. But then I found another costume, another character that I wanted to be, and also a Good Friday costume. It's a lot more makeup heavy. I'm not going to say too much about it, because I want to try doing this thing where it's like a secret uh, costume type thing. I don't think this color... Either I'm not using the right brush to apply it, and I'm probably not. But I don't know if this is going to be dark enough. Let me, let me grab a different brush here. Hang on. Here we go. I'm going to try applying this with a flatter brush. This might just not be as dark as I want it to. At least right now. But I've already got uh, one part of it. I'm actually posting the updates on my Instagram. Which, coincidentally, is linked in the description below. I am at opal zero sapphire. The zero doesn't have any meaning. It's just to separate, you know, opal and sapphire because, you know, underscore, the underscore and the, the period were taken. But all cosplay progress, I try to uh, update on my Instagram stories. And I even make uh, highlights on my page so you can go back and uh, watch the stories there if you missed them. So, like, I've got one for Undyne, I've got one for the Loki Scepter, I've got one for the Hocus Pocus one, I've got one <coughs> for, um, a couple others I can't think of right now. I don't think, actually, no, I think that's all the ones I've got, because I only just started doing them, uh, this past, I only started doing them when I did, when we started making the Loki Scepter for uh, the Renaissance Festival and uh, when I was working on Undyne for the Dallas Con. Yeah, I think this is as dark as this color is going to get for now, which is fine actually. I just wanted to lay something down really to help me uh, blend out what I'm going to be doing next. Uh, and of course I also have a highlight that I just titled Secret Cosplay. But so I decided to do it another one. I'm going to practice the makeup for that before I, I film it. I've only, just like I I've actually filmed a Sarah Sanderson tutorial first, before, first, before, yeah, I can speak today. I've actually filmed a Sarah Sanderson tutorial before, but uh, my camera angle, <laughs> I never want to be that close to you again. No offense, but like, my face was taking up the entire frame, and that was completely unnecessary. Also, I didn't have the wig, because I only just got the wig. I didn't have the wig at the time either, so it's just, you know, Sarah Sanderson, modern day with blue hair. <laughs> at least I think my hair was blue then, it might have been purple. Make sure you check my Instagram for updates on that. Uh, the makeup look for that is a lot more detail oriented. So I'm very nervous about it, which is why I want to practice it before I do a tutorial of it. I'm going to take my next Epic Ink Gel Liner. And where's my brush here, back here. And this is the only one I know the name of. This is the Morphe M165. It's just a flat angled brush that's good for like, <clears throat> excuse me, oh my god. That's good for like applying liner or doing your brows. I hope this liner is still creamy because I don't, I, I wear liquid more often than I wear gel. Because I still haven't figured out how to apply wings with gel liner where I'm happy with them. So I usually just uh, use gel. For stuff like this. I'm gonna smudge this along my lash line. In case you don't know, uh, I am going as Sarah Sanderson from Hocus Pocus to Dallas Fan Days in Irving. The dates are October 8th, the weekend of October 18th, so the 18th, 19th, and 20th. We are oh, staying in a hotel this time again, just like always. Only difference is last year we uh, actually went the day before, still the Thursday before the con, we went to have an extra day of like vacation. We're not doing that this year. 
I am not going as Foxy this year for Five Nights at Freddy's, which is bizarre. Listen, guys, I have been going as Foxy for Five Nights at Freddy's since this convention, since this group, this company did used to do uh, Dallas Fan Days in February, and they stopped doing that in 2016. The February 2016 show was their last February show. Which makes sense, because then the Dallas Con was only a couple months after that, and then the October one was only a few months after that. That February event was the first time I ever uh, went as Foxy, and I wasn't expecting to be so popular. That was like, Foxy was like my first, um, th that's what made me popular at cons. Like, no, I mean, not, not that, that no one, anyone knew who I was. But like Foxy, Five Nights at Freddy's is such a huge thing. There, the books and like all the games and all that. And Foxy was my favorite character. Still, is. I'm not as big into Five Nights uh, as I used to be, as or as I was when I first started doing it. And that was also my most intensive. That is my most intensive costume because I am inside a foam head with all with. An, an electronic eye that moves on its own that looks around and there's a camera inside the nose and I'm wearing v like VR goggles like a visor inside the head so I can see kind of see where I'm going I have like that my depth perception is like non-existent in there by the way my mother still has to guide me I can see things I just can't tell how close they are uh, am I concerned for the amount of small children who come up to me and know who I am Yes, because that game, in case you don't know, is a horror game about the ghosts of murdered dead children inside the animatronic suits. Which is very morbid. But then they probably aren't paying attention to the story, given the fact that they're like four or five year olds. I've done a Bleach and Foxy crossover. I've been Darth Foxy. And it's been a lot of fun. And this is going to be my first convention in three years that I have not been Foxy. My mommy been started cosplaying as like a human a human version of Freddy to go along with me. So it's it's kind of weird. It, it feels very weird. It's kind of sad. I'm not retiring. Do you mind? I'm not retiring Foxy, but this time since it's gonna the Hocus Pocus one is going to be on Saturday. It's me as Sarah, my mom as Winnie, and my dad as a, a male version of Mary. We've been calling him Maurice. But I'm not retiring Foxy, but for this con, Foxy is just not going to be there. God, that's so weird to say. It feels like the end of an era, but it's really not because I'm not just stopping with Foxy. It's, just, it's, it's weird. Now I'm going to go into the... Uh, black shade called dark side in the palette and I'm going to take this elf smudger brush it's literally the elf smudge brush I don't know if they have multiple ones but I'm just gonna pick up just the tiniest bit on the tip of the brush and tap it off because black is terrifying to work with and I'm gonna smudge out uh, the liner I'm gonna eyeball how far up I go but I just want to so not only soften this line, but also use it as a way to uh, drag the color up, kind of blend it up a bit. And then Sunday at the con is just going to be Loki again. I swear Loki is like my favorite costume, aside from Foxy. I've also already decided what costumes I'm going to wear for Dallas if we get to go to Dallas. Because with me probably most likely being, I'm going to be in, most likely be in school when the Dallas Con comes around. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to go next year. I mean, I hope so. But I've got a plan anyway. As of right now, I'm planning on going as Foxy on Saturday, Loki on Sunday, and... I'm going to be Galadriel from Lord of the Rings on... Friday. And I almost did that for this Friday, for this convention, but by the time I decided to do Galadriel, it was a little late to start sewing another costume. And the difference between the Dallas Con and the Irving Con is that Dallas, every, everything is inside. 
Like I think the only time that we ever leave a building that we ever go outside is to go to the car to unpack the car when we get there and pack it all back up when we when we leave the hotel. Seriously. Because the hotel has a that we stay at has a a sky bridge is what it's called that connects to the convention center. So I'm never outside and you know Galadriel's dress is white. So I really don't want to get that I want to get that as I want to keep it as clean as possible because it's bound to pick up stuff on the floor if it's long enough. I don't remember offhand if it's really long enough to do that. And at Irving, you know, there's no hotel connected to the convention center. And, you know, the food trucks are outside. So that's really the, unless you go to like the concession stands inside the, uh, the, the convention center, the food trucks are really your best bet for decent food. I mean, shoot, just walking around the convention center at Dallas, and it's just inside with the overskirt, with the gold overskirt for Loki, it picked up, it picks up so much st stuff, guys. Oh, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Now I'm gonna go in to this, oh, I didn't ever realize that's what you were called. I'm gonna go into the dark brown shade in the palette called Lust, and I'm gonna kind of mix it back and forth between Get your words right. I'm going to uh, mix that with a bit of Entitled, that light brown shade, on this kind of smaller fluffy brush. And I'm just gonna, right where the black starts fading into the taupey brown, I'm going to place it right there and blend it out up. I'm trying to um, blend it blend the black out a bit more and also darken up this area this area area air, air. I think I just had an internal malfunction no idea what that means but uh, here we are and now I'm gonna dip just straight into the dark brown and I'm gonna use it to define my crease as well. And back in with that bigger brush and some more of Entitled, I'm gonna go over it all. Make sure it's nice and blended. And now I'm gonna take a pencil brush. I'm not gonna add any shadow to it, I'm just gonna use it clean and I'm going to just blend between the browns and the blacks even more. Is that scratching off the eyeshadow? It is, okay. So don't do that. I'm gonna go back with the smudger brush. I'm not gonna add any more product to it as of right now, and I'm gonna use that instead to blend. I lied, I'm gonna dip a bit more into the black eyeshadow. And just kind of press it along the black and then blend up into the brown. This inner corner just does not want to keep the color. And back in with that smaller blending brush. No excess product, no extra product excess, yeah. Blend one more time, and ta-da! That eye's done. Now I have to repeat this on the other eye. Can I just like copy and paste, please? You know, I try to do a tutorial look for uh, every cosplay I do. I think the only one since I started this channel that I haven't done was Undyne. And I've got a little story to tell you guys about that while I do this eye. So I did actually uh, film a tutorial for Undyne. And it was my first time using that blue, that blue body paint. And it was my first time using, not using, trying the, the makeup for her as well. And as I was filming, I thought it had come out well. I liked how the makeup had come out at the time. When I went back to, when I went to edit the video, 
First of all, I was way too far away from the camera for you to be able to see what I was doing with my eyes. It just wasn't good quality. It wasn't good quality content. So I scrapped it. And I always planned to do it, to redo it. You know, make another tutorial. And I just never did. And then eventually the day came where I had to do the makeup for Undyne for the con. It was the day of the con. We were packing, I was doing makeup, we were getting ready to leave and stuff, and I streamed it on my Facebook, like I always do. And I completely forgot to film the tutorial. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> and uh, if you want to know why, there will be a video coming out after this video at some point. I'm planning on filming it after I'm done with this makeup. About why that tutorial will never see, will never come out. Why I will never try to film it again. Ugh. I get shivers just thinking, that's being overdramatic, I don't get shivers just thinking about it. I cringe thinking about it. I mean, now it's funny. At the time it wasn't. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to move on to my face, and I'm going to take the NYX Shine Killer Primer. Just a little, not too much. I just need it for my nose. And the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Primer. I love this Urban Decay one, by the way, just so you know. Don't take much of this either, because I don't put this... Hey, come on! all over my face. I just put it next to my nose, across, under my eye, just like this. And any excess that's on my fingers, I just wipe off on my top lip and my chin. Now, because Sarah is so pale, I'm going to be making my own custom shaded foundation, and for that I'm going to be taking this Neutrogena foundation. I've had this since October 2016. I've used this for Harley. It's old. I don't even know if they make it anymore. I've never seen it anymore, but then I've never really looked. But it's the Neutrogena Skin Clearing Complexion Perfector and Fair 10. It is a sheer coverage foundation, which at the time is all I needed. This was the lightest shade they had. I'm just going to squirt some out onto the back of my hand. I don't want to be as white as Suicide Squad Harley is. I just uh, want to be paler, so I'm going to mix more foundation than um, this foundation mixer. This is the NYX Pro Foundation Mixer in white. I'm going to squirt that on the back of my hand as well, next to the foundation. So I know I said I, put, I would put more foundation on the back of my hand than white, but I think I put about even amounts. So we're just going to wing it. <laughs> I forgot a sponge! I'm gonna mix them together on the back of my hand with my finger. This part's really just personal preference if you decide to be Sarah. Just make her as pale as you want. You don't even have to mix foundations. If you can find like a, uh, a foundation that's just right by itself, that's fine too. Let's see, is this pale enough? No, you need to be paler. And I think I need more too, so I'm just gonna squirt a bit more of each. Because I've got no more cream products that are gonna go on... I just made a mistake. Because I've got no more cream products that are gonna... Ah, why did I do that? Because I've got no more cream products that are gonna go on the top of the foundation, I'm gonna go ahead and set it with that translucent powder. In case you're wondering, hey Opal, why does it matter if you have more cream products to put on before you powder your face? Well, let me tell you. If you powder your face after you put on like your foundation or whatever you use, and then you want to, con say, contour, and you want to use like the NYX Wonder Stick or something, which is a cream contour stick. If you go on to use that and you use it over a powdered face, it's going to be patchy and it's not going to be a good time. 
if you were to use a powder contour, then you'd be fine. And I'm totally not speaking from experience. Now I'm going to go in with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in Ash Brown. My eyebrows are not brown. They are dark blonde. But blonde is too light. And brown is too dark. So I'm just going to take the spoolie end of the brush and I'm going to comb my brow hairs up and out. And then I'm just going to fill them in like I normally do. And then brush through them again with the spoolie once I'm done. Moving back on to the eyes, I'm going to take the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Black Bean. I would use my Maybelline eyeliner for this, but I can't find it right now. I know I have it. It's just not in my room. It's probably in my purse and I'm thinking about it. But this will work just fine. I just prefer the Maybelline one because it stays in my waterline longer. But I'm going to pop this in my lower waterline. Now I'm going to do the same thing to my lower lid that I did to my top lid. Starting out, same brush, same big fluffy brush, back in with Entitled. I'm going to run it along my lower lid, connecting it to whatever is peeking out on the edge of my top lid. Now I'm not doing gel liner on my lower lash line because that would be hell to get off. Instead, I'm just going back in with the smudge brush, back into the black, and I'm going to smudge this along my lower lash line. As close to my lashes as I can get, and connecting it as well. I'm trying not to look like a raccoon. I'm trying to look like Sarah Sanderson. And now, same smaller fluffy brush. I'm just going to dip straight into the dark brown. I'm not going to mix it with entitled or anything. Just gonna blend out the black, go over that with same big fluffy brush, not adding any more product. Back in with the smudge brush, no more product. Rinse and repeat on the other side. I'm gonna wipe off whatever's left on this big brush on the back of my hand, and I'm gonna go all the way around my eye one more time. Make sure it's all nice and blended. And now for the fun part. Or one of my favorite parts, honestly. I'm going in with the ColourPop uh, Super Shock Cheek Highlighter in Flexitarian. Just gonna pick up a little bit on the brush and I'm going to pop this on my inner corner. I'm a highlighter fiend. I love highlighter. I love to glow. A lot. Sometimes I will mix highlighters. Like I went to, my parents and I went to a, tra a train concert in June and I mixed three different highlighters. I mixed two shades in my NYX Born to Glow highlighting palette, the top two shades, and I mixed it in with this ColourPop highlighter and either the NYX A Bit Jelly Gel Illuminator in Luminous. No, I don't think it was that one. No, I mixed it with my Disney Villains and ColourPop Maleficent highlighter. I mixed those together and it was beautiful. I'm also going to put this on my brow bone. Now I'm going to take the NYX On The Rise mascara, which I love, by the way. I love this mascara so much. Oh, wait, nope, I lied. I'm not taking this yet. <laughs> I'm going to, once I find my lash curler, I'm going to curl my lashes first. You know, to someone who doesn't know what lash curling is, I bet this looks terrifying. Wait, what are you? Now I'm taking that NYX mascara. Now I'm going to go into my It Cosmetics You Sculpted palette. And I'm going to take the shade Soft Contour on this t tiny little angled fluffy brush. I'm literally just going to lightly tap the brush into the color and tap off the excess, any excess that comes out. And I'm going to contour my cheekbones. And first I'm going to move my baby hairs out of the way as much as possible and press it into the hollows of my cheeks 
and then just swipe back and forth like this. Nothing too dramatic, I just want a uh, definition. Now back in with that ColourPop highlighter. This time I'm going to take it on my finger because I find that for face highlighting, uh, their, hi their Super Shock highlighters apply best with my finger. And I'm going to first tap it on. Now I'm going to take my NYX Suede Lip Liner in Cherry Skies. And I'm going to line my lips. And with the NYX Licorice Lane lipstick in Sweet Surrender. This was part of a set from their candy themed collection from the holiday season last year. I'm gonna fill it in. Uh. Ooh, excuse me. Carbonation! This smells kind of sweet. That's funny. I, wonder, I never noticed that before. I wonder if all of uh, the Licorice Lane lipsticks smell like this. It smells kind of a vanilla-y. Like a bakery. Like frosting. Vanilla-y. Like a bakery. Like frosting. Hmm, is that going to be a, a new Bath & Body Works uh, candle? And now I'm going to try and pop on this wig. I need to grab it. I am not... Let me get back in shot here. I am not a pro at a putting wigs on by myself. I have an easier time putting short wigs on by myself than long wigs. But uh, I'm gonna tr I'm gonna try today. Where is the top of this thing? Okay. Pray for me. I will uh, go ahead and link this wig uh, in the description. It's from Amazon, and if you look at the reviews, there, or at least there was when I went and looked, there was a review on it, and they left pictures of them wearing this for a Sarah costume, so I went ahead and ordered it. This is modern day Sarah Sanderson if she wore a train concert t shirt. <laughs> but that is it for my Sarah Sanderson makeup. I kind of want to burst out into uh, Come Little Children right now, but uh, I'll spare your ears because I'm not a great singer. Oh, I almost forgot the most important part. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, do I have the right brush for this? Can I use you? Yes, I can use you. I can use you. You should work. Actually, Hang on. It's funny, I forgot about this in the first tutorial I filmed, and now I almost forgot it again. So, Sarah, I'm looking at my Funko Pop of her. Sarah has a beauty mark on her chin, so I'm going to take my uh, NYX Epic Ink Liquid Liner, and I'm just going to... If my chin could stop twitching, that'd be great. I hadn't meant to make it that big, but... uh. Oh well. Okay, now I'm done with my Sarah makeup. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you want to see me do more stuff like this. Make sure you check me out on my Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter. I am most active on my Instagram and my Tumblr. There will also, oh, excuse me, there will also be a list of all the products I use today on my face and a link to the wig. And I will also leave a link down to the Dallas Fanbase website. So you can go check that out if you're interested in going. I'm Opal Sahar, and I will see you in the next video.